Good morning, morning everybody. everybody. Welcome to Church Online. It's great to have you with us this morning. Today is the first Sunday of the month, so we are getting going on a new practice, and the practice for March is submission. Stick with it. Claire's going to explain it later on in the service, but to get the ball rolling, I've got an opening question for us. Mm -hmm. For those of you in sports, you'll know that we are deep into Six Nations territory, mm -hmm. and whenever the Six Nations comes on, us and some uni mates do like a Six Nations fantasy kind of thing. And it's uh, Ronan O'Garris, who's a very famous Irish rugby player. It's his birthday today. Wow. And he was always wow, good for me. points. I wish I could get Ronan back in my team because I'm not doing very well. Why can't he have him in your team? Well, he's retired. Oh, sorry. But I did pick an Irish fly half from 2012 on my team last week and got no points for it. Right. Anyway, <laughs> what I want to know is if you could invite a celebrity to your birthday, Yeah. who would it be? I want to hear your comments, Facebook, YouTube. If a celebrity was going to come to your birthday, let's imagine that COVID isn't happening just for a minute. They can okay, come in the yeah. house, they can eat with you, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Who would it be? Yeah. What's your pick? Well, it's got to be somebody funny. Because you, on your birthday, you just want to laugh, don't you? Or, or probably a good chef, maybe. Mm. Oh, yeah, one of the two. Either somebody oh, cooks really idea. well, so I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm really struggling to think of chefs right now. But Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, Jamie Oliver. I don't know. Does uh, okay, he? Gordon. Yeah, Gordon. Great. I don't want to get sworn on my birthday, though. Anyway, some sort of celebrity chef. Or probably a comedian. But you don't want like a stand-up comedian. You don't want them to do like a spiel. Yeah, yeah. You want someone who's really chatty, very conversational. Great. James Corden. I mean, he of. has a, a chat show, doesn't he? So he's yes. great at getting conversations Absolutely. together, isn't he? Yeah, so. Maybe James Corden. What okay. Well, Al said that if I invite Emma Watson to my fake birthday then party, I won't come. she would be coming. I won't come to your fake birthday So party. it would be Emma Watson. Oh, that's good. Well, only because you wouldn't come. Yeah. And that would be that would be a real shame. Who would I have? Loads of great loads of great people. I think the other panel funny, a good cook is worthwhile. I think I would like Barack Obama. Oh yeah. I mean who wouldn't want? Yeah. Get, get a little birthday hug off Barack Obama. That would be bro. Yeah. Yeah, and you play basketball afterwards, you have a great time. <laughs> Shoot some birthday hoops. Let us know who what celebrity you would invite to your birthday. Love to hear it. We're going to hear a bit about submission later on from Claire, and right now we're going to begin by worshipping together. Jesus did not come to be a slave master, but a servant who gave his life to rescue many people. From them you came, helpless be. Entered our world, your glory veiled. This is our God. 
heart, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow We are doing all of our notices on Zoom and I've got great news for you. Yeah. It's going to be some Hudson Andrews gossip happening on Zoom that? this morning. Yeah, We're going to give you all the insider info on what's happening this Easter. Whoa. Make sure that you get yourself over to Zoom. The um, link is going to be uh, in the comments section on here in a little bit. Make sure that you join us so you can find out all the hot goss on what's happening on Easter 21. For verse 39 to 46. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father if you are willing take this cup from me yet not my will but yours will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A new month a new spiritual discipline for us to think about. And this month, the discipline is submission. Now, if you're anything like me, when you hear that word, something inside you shrivels up a bit and kicks off a kind of rebellion about not wanting to know or needing to, not wanting to think about what submission might mean because the word feels loaded and negative. Well, let's just stop there for a moment and be honest about it. Submission as a discipline is hard and like many good things, is open to being misinterpreted and misunderstood. When I was thinking about submission and this word and how I react to it, my breakthrough in understanding came when I remembered that all the disciplines we've been studying have the primary purpose of bringing us freedom, helping us flourish and drawing us towards Jesus. We know that Jesus is God and we know that God is love, so we also know that these disciplines must grow love. And as we know, love is patient, love is kind, it protects and it trusts. So what's submission then in this context of love? In his book, The Celebration of Discipline, Richard Foster says that submission is about self-sacrifice, about letting go of our control and all our desires for worldly greatness or winning. It's about stepping back from our privilege and our position in favour of others. He says it's not about our self-interest or even our self-pity, but it's about our self-love. Like all spiritual disciplines, it's also our choice. We decide if we're going to submit to Jesus and those around us or not. For example, I wonder if you've ever been in a situation like this. This morning, I was downstairs sorting and folding washing and I shouted upstairs to the kids to come and get their stuff. After about 10 minutes of increasingly frustrated shouting on my part, one of them finally arrived. Then, after an intense negotiation, with some stomping and muttering under their breath, 
they picked up the washing to carry it upstairs and put it away. Job done, you might think. They were submissive and the work is finished. But here's the thing, that's not submission. In that situation, I was expressing coercive control or my nagging or my explaining how terribly busy I am and how it's not too much for them to ask for them to help me. And they, with all their muttering and stomping, were not being submissive. If anything, they demonstrated martyrdom, not submission. Now, all of what I've said is normal behaviour and we learn and we grow and I don't think there's anything wrong in our exchange today. But I want to be really clear about what biblical submission is and what it's not. It is not me getting my own way by riding roughshod over the feelings of those around me. And it's not those around me capitulating in action, but not in will. Imagine the situation again. This time, the clean washing's on a pile, and I know that I'm going upstairs soon, so I take it. I don't need to get into a debate about whose turn it is, or yell at someone until they concede to do it. Now, I don't do the work because I'm a slave to them, or because I don't think they should learn how to put their own washing away. I don't do it because I'm in control and only I know how to put the washing away properly. I do it on this day, in this moment, in love, because I recognise their struggles, their difficulties. And on this occasion, and not always, I carry it away for them. That's my submission in action, my choice. It's a simple and somewhat silly example, but it does start to show us something of what submission is and what it's not. Submission as a way of getting to know Jesus better is about freedom, not control. We choose to submit and we discern when to. Submission lets go of self-interest in favour of another. It's not coercive. Submission does not need its own way in every argument. It can concede the point and let it go. Submission is grace-filled, not martyrdom. There's love not, and joy, not grumbling and moaning in, in being submissive. It's an inner attitude of heart and not just a set of ill-willed outward actions. Michelle Guinness, in her book about women in the Bible, tells us that the word Paul uses in his letters about submission is hypotasso. Now, my Greek is terrible, so I'll bow to her superior knowledge here when she tells me that there are a few possible interpretations of this word. Firstly, it could mean to behave in a responsible manner with respect and common courtesy. It's not then about one person overruling another or any kind of power play. Hypotasso, she says, could also be translated as uniting one person with another. And in this context, submission becomes about mutual benefit and drawing together. It looks more like living in harmony than it does about dominance of any one person. Finally, Michelle Guinness says that hypotasso could be translated as remaining in another sphere of influence, giving them respect. Again, submission is about reciprocal compassion and equity. It's not gender specific, it's not one-sided and it doesn't do harm. Here I think it's probably important for us to consider who we're being submissive to. Firstly, the discipline of submission is to God in all things. The challenge is to consider if all that we do with our body, our mind and our spirit is given over to him. Where or what are we holding back? Are you like me, sometimes hanging on to control because you're afraid to let Jesus have you fully? Do you somehow think that the maker and creator of the world might not be able to manage your situation, so you frantically try to work it out on your own. Jesus, as always, gives us the perfect example of how to be human and how to do submission well. In our reading this morning, we see him praying. We see him sweating. 
we see him asking that he won't have to do what lies ahead, asking the Father to find another way if possible. But although he receives comfort from angels and the Father strengthens his spirit, what needs to be done cannot be changed. Jesus ultimately submits willingly and humbly to walk a path that leads to his agonising death on our behalf. Jesus lived his whole life in submission, in all he did. He washed the disciples' feet. He took people seriously who were not considered worthy of attention. He didn't worry about being popular or liked. He worried only about doing God's will. Jesus shows us that submission is not easy, but also that it isn't about relinquishing all responsibility. Instead, it's fully, it's about taking fully taking responsibility for what we do, acknowledging we can't really submit without God's help. And then just as Jesus does in the garden, as he prays for the cup to be taken, it's about acknowledging that in submission, we're giving it all to God, no matter where that takes us. In Jesus, we have the ultimate example of how submission to God brings freedom, freedom from social orders, based on power, freedom from our own self-interests, but also we see that a submitted life isn't necessarily an easy life. As we submit ourselves to Jesus, I think what follows is our willingness to submit to those around us, to our friends, our family, our neighbours and our community. But as we've seen when we've studied the disciplines for the last few weeks, it's always our choice, but it always works best when we do it together. As we choose to submit to Jesus, so freedom comes to love God more and know him better and then to love his people more too. But like all the disciplines, it takes practice. We have to keep trying at it. We will get it wrong. We will fail. It will involve us doing some things we don't like. For example, taking the washing away ourselves. But just like any new skill, we will get better at it by having a go, by practicing and by listening well to our teacher. In this case, it's Jesus. Finally, submission as it brings freedom to love Jesus and those around us better, allows us to better recognise the view of another and be gracious in letting go of our standpoint. But it does not stay silent in the face of oppression or the abuse of power. Submission points to Jesus. Jesus is God and God is love in all things. He loves us unreservedly and wants the best for us. Sometimes we find that hard, but it's not destructive, it's not oppressive and it's not violent. Jesus' love is goodness, it's compassionate, it's free and it's just. Jesus wants us to flourish and be all he made us to be. Of course he knocks our edges off and he reshapes us differently. That's growth. Submission grows us towards Jesus, but it always calls out oppression because it's about calming the self and listening for the heart of God, letting go of our own control and letting Jesus shape us and direct us. So despite my initial misgivings about what being submissive might mean, I think the discipline of submission will grow our hearts towards Jesus and we'll build up his people in love. So will you give it a go this month? Will you join me in doing the work of study as it comes out in the church email? Will you submit yourself to Jesus's perfect will? Will you practice the art of submission to his people? I pray that you will, as I pray that I will this month. Our practice resource is going to be in your email inboxes right now so make sure that you check it out so you've got everything that you need for our practice this month. Great and we're just going to spend a couple of minutes now thinking about how do you feel about submission to Jesus so take a moment put it in the comments on YouTube and Facebook if you'd like to how do you feel about submission to Jesus.
Good morning, church. On last week's Sunday, we read in the book of Mark how the demon-possessed man Jesus healed wanted to follow him, and but Jesus asked him to go back to his family to go and share his story of deliverance with them. And the man went and happily did that. There are other stories like that in the Bible, um, like when Jesus healed the, um, the man with leprosy, told him to go and show himself to the priest. The man was so happy and then um, started sharing his stories even before he got to the, um, to the priest. My question to us is this, how much of our story do we share with our family members? When I mean story, I mean um, the story of our salvation, the um, story of our, our, our faith. How much of it, the story about Jesus Christ, the love of Christ, how much of it do we share with our family members that have not come to the, um, to, um, um, to, to the knowledge of Christ, to our friends, to our colleagues that have not come to the knowledge of Christ. Even when the opportunity presents itself, are we bold enough to share our stories with people? Um, in Psalm 71, um, um, the psalmist, I'm reading from um, New Living Translation from verse 15, the psalmist says, I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long, I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds, O sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. Here the psalmist says, even though he is not skilled with words, he will still proclaim of the saving power of Jesus. He will still tell everyone how just God is. I will encourage us. Everybody loves good story. Everybody loves positive story. I believe if we share our stories as often as possible, people will be gravitated to um, um to 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 the to the would I say the root of our stories, and the root of our story is Jesus Christ. The main reason for our story is Jesus. People will be people will. Would, 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 with the help of the Holy Spirit, people will come to the knowledge of Christ. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you so, so much for your goodness, for your mercies, for your love that knows no bound that you have for us. Thank you so much for the beautiful stories that you have given to us in this life. Jesus, we thank you so much because everything about you is good. Every story about you is positive and it is good and is to our own good. We pray to you that you may help us, give us boldness, empower us through your Holy Spirit to be able to share our stories with our friends, with our neighbors, with our colleagues the story of salvation, the story of your great love. Please help us at all times to, to, to tell of your goodness, not to hold it, to, not, not to hold back, not, not to be ashamed of, of, of you, not to be ashamed of, of telling people how good you are. In your name, Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Lord God Almighty, we commit everyone into your hands, O God, and we pray, O Lord, that you may continue to lift up the light of your countenance upon us, that you may continue, O Lord, to show us your mercy, that you may continue to lead us, continue to protect us, continue your good work in us, O God. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Let's pray a final blessing together. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be of good heart as it goes well with your soul. 
Um, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and pray for today. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll see you on Zoom. We will do. What are we going to Zoom for? Easter notices. Hot Easter goss. Hot Easter goss. Make yeah. sure you join us. <laughs> Forever here.